Hi guys, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I just want to ask you all to say your name, your occupation, and for how long did you know Dr. Hisham? Raja? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Raja Ramanathan. I'm a PhD student with Dr. Nasr Udin, and I've been working with him for seven years. Ahmed? Ahmed, you're on mute. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Ahmed Al Qadi. I, uh, I I did masters with Dr. Nasuddin. I've been with Dr. Nasuddin for one and a half years. Um, Mustafa. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Mustafa Ali. Um, I'm a PhD student with Dr. Nasuddin. I've known Dr. Nasuddin for only one year. I uh, just joined last year as a PhD student in AM. Omar? Hello everyone, uh, my name is Omar Abdelwahab. I'm a PhD student working, or used to work with Dr. Nasruddin. Uh, I've known him for one year, and I've been working with him for one year, and I knew him six months before that, so basically 18 months in total. Harish? Hello everyone, my name is Harish Kumar. Uh, I'm actually a PhD candidate, un candidate under Dr. Hisham Nasruddin in Petroleum Engineering, and I have known him for seven years now. Igor? Hi everyone, my name is Igor Ivanishin. I'm a PhD student with Dr. Nasruddin, PhD candidate. Uh, I first met Dr. Nasruddin around five years ago, and I've been working with him for three and a half years. Abdurrahman. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Abdurrahman Ob. Um, I'm a PhD student, a candidate with Dr. Nasruddin. Uh, I've known him for more than nine years now, uh, but we've been working together for uh, four and a half. Aitan. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Aitan Reedy. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Texas A&M, and um, I've known Dr. Hisham for about 10 years now. I did my master's with him, and then I started my PhD with him as well. Great, thank you so much. Uh, so now we skip the introduction part. I want to ask you all to share something about him that you want to share. And I want to start with Ahmed Al-Odi. Okay, hey, so uh, Dr. Nasuddin really uh, loves helping people. Uh, I myself didn't have any uh, um, chance for graduate studies. The, uh, um, uh, only he uh, who helped me in um, basically everything. Needless to say, I didn't have any experience uh, whatsoever. I came directly from my undergrad to grad studies. Uh, he guided me um, to be in the lab for the first time. He showed me trust and I sent me um, to company project under his direct supervision. He, um, he always find, found the time to um, guide me and answer all the questions I had. Uh, he was a really good professor and mentor. Thank you. Um, Mustafa, I think you have uh, more personal notes or more personal story to share. Can you share, please? Um, I'll share actually my story of uh, how, doc I've, how I've communicated with Dr. Nasruddin and, uh, and how actually I joined TAMO. It was actually like the, the fastest acceptance I've ever gotten in my life. Um, so I was like communicating with all professors around the world to, uh, I mean, to do my PhD studies after I finished my master's and I took a year off, you know, figure out stuff. And then uh, like, I was like going around Tamu because I was working in Tamu in, in an other branch. And then I found, I, I, his name came across. That was like before taking a vacation, you know, from work. It was like last day at work. I, was, I, I came across his profile and I sent him an email. And then like 15 minutes later, uh, I got a reply, call me at this number. Um, so I called the number and, you know, uh, you know, like, I, I we usually like send generic emails to all professors that we want to work with them and uh, we're interested in their work and all of that. So uh, he called me and then uh, I actually called, yeah, sorry, I called him and 
uh, and then like he, he just said, okay, you've sent me a long email, what do you want? And then I said, like, I'm interested in doing my PhD study with you and I read some of your research and, and I'm kind of, you know, interested in pursuing my PhD with you. And then, and then he said, okay. And then I was like, you know, confused. I mean, is, is, is that easy that you actually get accepted with professors? Like, you know, being okay. Um, and then he said, and then he asked me, you know, some requirement questions. Did you get your stuff and GRE and IELTS and all of that? I was like, yeah, I'm okay. And then he said, okay. And then, okay, so what does okay mean? So I was like, okay, you, work with, you want to work with me? I said, yes. And then he said, okay, you're accepted. And then one week I got my acceptance letter to work with him. And then, yeah, it was, it was the fastest and, you know, the easiest, you know, acceptance I got in my life, honestly. And then we started communicating together and reading some research before coming and all of that. Uh, I would say, like, since day one I communicated with him, he kept following up with me. Uh, he was like a father who used to accept any student. And it was, if, if I'm not the case, I've, I've seen similar cases, a lot of cases uh, of people who want to work with him just because of his name and his uh, 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 passionism and, 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 uh, and how kind he is in dealing with students. Um, I mean, he used to bring any student who want to work with him and, and he make them succeed in their, what they want to do and they want to excel in their life. And uh, a great leader who influenced everyone around, especially me, he was the best boss of, I mean, not, not boss, he was the greatest leader of, of, I've worked with in my entire life. Um, I had, I worked in research field for like almost four years. That was the best one year I've ever had in my life. Uh, being working under Dr. Nasruddin. I've never felt that I have uh, uh, a boss or a leader to report to. He was, uh, he was an amazing person to say, to conclude. Thank you, Mustafa. Uh, along the lines of getting accepted to Texanem, uh, Omar, would you like to share your story? Yeah, uh, Dr. Hisham was, was a really caring person. He was uh, really helpful and he can like from his experience, like he has a, a lot of experience, he has years and years of experience and he can know if someone has a potential or not. And I applied uh, or sent him an email to, to get or to work under his supervision after the deadline. And I wasn't expecting for him to accept me for the, for the, for the fall semester. And I, I got an, an, an I reply back in like a matter of hours, like two or three hours, he told me, uh, okay, do you, do you even have a GRE test? And I told him, no, I just like I, I booked the, the test and I will have the test in two weeks. So he told me, okay, for now you just have to study and get back to me when you get the, the grades. I, I think because usually the, the GRE test, you have to take it more than once to get the, to get the, uh, the expected grade. And I think he didn't expect that. So I got like, I got back to him after two weeks. I told him I got this grade and he called me instantly. He gave me his number and, uh, and told me to call him. I called him and told him that I, I got the grade. He told me, okay, I don't expect that you will be in, like, in the fall semester with us, but it will be probably in the spring semester because the deadline has passed. So let me go to the graduation office and I will get back to you in a couple of hours. And like in one hour, he sent me an email told me, okay, we, we opened the window for you and you have one week to, to, uh, to submit all the documents and you will be my student for the fall. So he was an amazing person and his door was always open. And he, um, he was a very helpful person. Uh, yeah, and I, ha I don't have a lot of research experience. I only had the, my master's degree, which was one year in, uh, in the United Kingdom and one year with him. And yeah, by, by far, he is, he is the best mentor I ever had. Thank you so much, Omar. Uh, Raja, would you like to share? Yeah, so Dr. Nasruddin is one of a kind professor. Uh, I'm sure all the stories that the others are going to talk about has applied to each and every one of us. Uh, but the one story that I want to share, uh, or the one quality that I want to share, is something that I noticed over my seven years of uh, studying here at Texas a &M. Uh, when I go to other professors and when I see uh, students of other professors, 
they always tell me one thing uh, that the professors micromanage and they force the students to do what they want to do. Dr. Isham was very unique because even though he was highly, highly respected in the industry, he always valued the opinion and uh, the suggestions that the students had. And that is something that I really uh, am grateful for because without that, a lot of people will not be able to develop their skill sets. And Dr. Isham really brought the skills out of us uh, by letting us do what we want. And at the same time, guiding us as to what is the right thing to do as well. Uh, you don't want people to carry you uh, from the start to the finish. You want someone to be there uh, beside you when you fall down. So Dr. Isham was always there whenever I was struggling or whenever I had challenges during my master's and my PhD. And he always supported me and he always told me that, that these things are normal to be done. Uh, you will be challenged, you will fall down many times, but the most important thing is how you rise up from those uh, challenges. And that is one thing which I've never noticed uh, any other graduate student talking about. Thank you, Raja. Harish, would you like to share? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think, you know, one of the most unique items that I felt with him was um, the bond he struck with the families of grad students. You know, not many advisors' doors are open to the parents of the grad students, right? That's, uh, that's very, that was very unique of him. He would actually go to the extent of calling my dad and actually informing him not to worry because all parents are worried about the PhD degree or the master's degree of their, you know, kids. And he didn't. He never needed to do that. We're actually above an age where we are dependent on our parents. But even then, he wouldn't. Um, you know, he would still go the extra mile in that case. And so, in this way, what you're seeing is that the families are also comforted, and they also know that um, their kids are in the right and good hands. Um, the other thing I want to share is the way his classroom teachings were. I think they were one of a kind in the sense that he would always um, carry out his classes and they were fueled by his experience. It was never by the book. And that's what made his classes so interesting. None of us were ever bored in his classes. And that's one of the reasons because when I came into the Texas A&M, I did not have an advisor in hand yet. Um, and I had to choose an advisor. So I actually attended his uh, class in fall 2013 for well simulation. And I think everyone knows that that was one of the best classes we've ever taken. And um you know, his exams were tough. Uh, it was like, I, I don't think any of us got like, you know, high scores and stuff like that, but because his questions were tricky, but, um, you know, what is important is what we learn at the end of a course. And his course was one of the fewest um, that we've really learned and had a, you know, we've gained a lot of things from his courses. Um, and his teaching via experience is very unique. It's uh, very few professors have that skill. And I think he was one of that. Um, and I, one of the qualities which I valued in him the most uh, was his, uh, his respect for honesty. He always wanted us to be honest in everything that we do. And um, in terms of, you know, his legacy, I think um, no matter how much he's done in the industry, I know that he's, he has a very big name in the industry. And he has several patents to his name and all that, all those things. But his true legacy, I feel, will be his graduate students, past and present. You know, we are the true legacy. And I think we will carry on his principles and teachings for generations to come. Um, and uh, one of the most valuable lessons I've learned from him is to be specific and to the point when answering anything from anybody. So he always respected um, the quality of being brief and to the point. And uh, the other important factor that I learned from him was to treat your successes with utmost humility and treat your failures with encouragement for yourself. Because um, you know those are two important qualities which actually keep you going all the way, no matter whether you have falls or successes in life. 
Um, so if he was, you know, if he was listening to me now, um, I would definitely tell him that I will keep publishing my whole life, no matter where I go from here and wherever I reach, uh, because his rule was always to publish, publish and publish whenever, you know, whatever opportunity we get. And, um, he was a wise man, a kind man and a man of few words, but in depth, um, you know, uh, detail in whatever he spoke. Thank you so much, Harish. That was beautiful, actually. Thank you. Uh, Aitan, would you like to share something about Dr. Hisham? So, um, I met Dr. Hisham in um, 2011. I had just recently moved to Texas A&M. I transferred there, and at that point in time, I did not know anyone there, and I was extremely terrified with the decision that I made. And I was questioning whether I should continue at Texas A&M or go back home where my family is. And then I met him and I talked to him and I told him how terrified I was. And um, he told me that I should stick to my decision and he encouraged me. And he told me that he's always gonna be here to support. And he's actually the reason for me to continue at Texas A&M and then do my master's and then my PhD and so on. So I owe him that. And if he was here, I wanna thank him for that um, because that was a very big step in my career. Um, as Harish was saying, his classes were beyond amazing. I took four courses with him. Um, I'd enjoy the classes to the extent that even when I was done with the courses, I would still go audit some of his classes just because they're very beneficial. Um, he was just one of a kind. He did not follow a textbook. He, he would lecture just out of his experience and he'd make sure every single person in the class is focused and we'd the way he taught, he'd make you give him your utmost concentration. And um, it was just amazing the way he teaches this class. I don't think I've seen any professor that does the same thing. Another thing that was amazing about him is his door was always open. No matter what's going on with his life, he'd be having such hard times health-wise or anything. And you can still go to his office, ask him whatever you need, and he's gonna support you 100%. So that was just amazing. Um, he really cared about us, um, not only from the career-wise, but also our personal lives. So he'd make enough time to ask us about our families, our personal lives, what's going on, and make sure that everything was good with us, not only just uh, work-wise, but also as our personal life. Um, he was an amazing person. And, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Aitan. Uh, Igor, would you like to share something? Yeah. So I uh, met Dr. Nasadin when I was uh, working in the industry. And uh, at that time, I was just consulting with him, you know, some questions about hydraulic fracturing and other processes. And he was always uh, open, you know, some, kind, some guy from the other part of the world he met me once, but he was always answering my questions. And, you know, it may be, so I'm sending email in the morning, again, in the, by another part of the world. It is around 2 or p.m. here in Texas, and you get reply in, it's like 10, 15 minutes, you get reply. Like, it's, uh, you don't expect to receive email at least until the morning uh, here, but he replies in the, in, in the minutes. Uh, so he was constantly working. I was amazed. Like, I did not know when, when he is really take a rest. So this is one uh, thing. Uh, yeah, he was exceptional mentor. Uh, you know, um, it's not easy, but you can teach someone and pass the knowledge. But to make someone a real researcher, or the person study some effect, something, uh, you should let them to generate the ideas uh, and just guide the student in that path. And that was doctor, what was Dr. Nasidin doing. Whenever you have a question, you can come to him always and he will listen and he will give you specific answer. And uh, yeah, you, you go and study uh, more. Uh, but again, he was guiding and he 
have never tried to you to do some work which you did not want to do. And he, he used to tell me that research is the same as love. So you cannot force someone to love. So it, the same is research. Like you have to really uh, want to do, want to, uh, to study what you are studying. And some really good uh, examples. For example, um, I come to his office uh, with, a, with a question of sample preparation for XRG. And it was not really broad preparation of the sample. I, I wanted to know how to divide certain amount of sample evenly. So, and he, you, you know, out of his head, he tells you there is a book published by this author in 1972. Just go. And he he may he may even give you the range of the pages to look for. It's amazing, and it was several several times. I remember several times coming to his office, and he would give you a specific book, specific author. He will even spell the author name for you to be easier to find him. So it's amazing. Um, yeah, and for example, in some I would not say critical situations, but when you need the result as soon as possible, he, he can give you a call and the first question he'll ask you, how are you? Then he will, he, he will ask you, how, how is your wife? And how is, you, how is your daughter? And only after that, he can go uh, into business. So exceptional person. Um, he taught me not only like in scientific way, but also uh, a lot of uh, personal qualities I will follow after him. Um, yeah, I was all. I will always remember him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Abdurrahman. I feel um, a lot of emotions are in these messages, and uh, it's. I feel it's difficult for me to top that, but <clears throat> whenever I think of uh, Doctor Doctor Hashem. Um, I think of how tough he was. I feel it's great that people are saying how how much he helped them, but it's good to remember that he he wasn't he wasn't a walk in the park working working with him. It was hard work. It was dedication. It was learning experience. But there are three things that I felt were unique about him. Number one is he was an advocate for his students. He did not care about publications. He cared about the process of knowledge. And finally, he, when, he, when he took a student and when he discussed with his students, he, he didn't really uh, only focus on the student. Uh, he talked about, he wanted to know how they're doing outside work, their family, their, their loved ones, uh, their parents. Um, and I feel for me um, personally, when when uh, I felt his advocacy uh, for me was whenever we were working on sever several projects, even if we were facing challenges within the projects, whenever he would talk about me with someone, uh, and that's not in front of me, I, I would hear that from the other person. I would always uh, hear how, how much he, he speaks up about his students, um, even without them knowing. Uh, and I feel, uh, that showed me that he's not just a professor or an advisor. He's he's a mentor who 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 worked on helping each and and, and every one of the of his students. Um, I think I'm gonna stop here. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, I know you got too emotional, but uh, that's all right. He he deserves that. He was an exceptional man. So I'm um, gonna jump to the next question. Uh, I just want you guys to describe his personality in three words. Raja? Uh, three words is very difficult to describe. But if on top of my head, a uh, leader should be one of the main things, uh, one of his main qualities. Um, he, as far as I know, in his graduate, uh, in his graduate life or his academic life, he has always had at least thirty to forty to even fifty students in his group. Uh, 
I don't think anyone else in uh, the department had that many number of people in the research group. He was always a leader to all of us, uh, so much as to uh, the other graduate students and the other graduate professors. They used to call us uh, Dr. Ishan Zarmi. Uh, so he was a commander for us. He supported us. Uh, he protected us uh, from any kind of uh, criticism that comes from outside. He used to handle all kinds of problems within the group and not really uh, publish or re not really uh, propagate the uh, propagate those things to the outside world. The second thing would be highly respected. Uh, respect, you can just look, go to onepetro.org and type his name and you will see that the number of papers he has published is really uncomfortable. Uh, he has he has published over like 700 papers and contributed to uh, to numerous other papers in many other ways. So respect, respect is one thing which uh, which I would say is one of his other qualities. And the third thing is approachable. So like the other people have already spoken about, his door is open to any graduate student. Uh, whether it is in his own research group or whether it is in any other research group. He was always approachable. He was, uh, he was always available to give any kind of advice, whether it is professional or personal advice. And he took a sincere uh, commitment and uh, effort to help you in what you want to achieve in life. Uh, so if you want to just... Um, talk about three qualities, I would say leadership, uh, respect, respected, and approachable would be my top three qualities. Thank you, Raja. Stofa? I mean, as Raja said, I mean, it's kind of hard to describe it in three words, but um, what I've seen, what I've noticed, I would say passionate. Um, he was so passionate uh, about everything, uh, especially the science. I mean, reaching to his age and his... Uh, his level of, uh, of science and, and, and um, with industry experience, he was still learning and he was still asking us what are, um, what are our opinions and what is uh, our input in, in anything. Um, he would still learn from us. He would still, he learned, he knows everything about everything in life, uh, politics, sports, um, science and, and any of um, its disciplines. Uh, he was passionate about his work. He recruits students like like within seconds, uh, as I've like told my story. But uh, his passionism and 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 being passionate about what he's doing was amazing. Uh, second thing was uh, being kind, um, as elaborated by my colleagues as well. Um, he used to ask, "How are we doing?" before jumping to work. Um, one of like my highlights about that was um, it was some work, unfinished work that has to be done before I travel uh, to take my vacation in um, between semesters. And he asked me first how I'm doing, how is the preparation traveling, and uh, what's your flight number, when you're gonna reach, and uh, how's your family. And then he asked us, did you submit that? Did you finish this before you travel and everything? And Surprisingly, when I reached back home and, and uh, I, I opened my, my phone, I, I found a message from him, did you reach and call me when you, when you get there? So I thought there was unfinished work. When I called him, he was checking on me, he was just checking on me. I even called my mom and, uh, and he made sure that everything is okay. And um, he, was, he was an amazing person, honestly, I mean, being caught. And the last thing and the most important thing is being humble. Uh, with his publications and his citations and his experience in the field, he wa he never like mentioned that I'm an amazing person or like bragging about it. Uh, he was saying that the more knowledge you get, the more humble you get. And and uh, with that point, I mean, he reached all of our hearts and being the greatest mentor we've ever seen in in our lives. Thank you, Mustafa. Igor. If you allow, I will use one word. 
it's a solid and then you can add everything you want to it so he is solid in interpersonal relationships he is solid as a researcher as a mentor and uh, everything you want to add um he is exceptional yeah thank you thank you Omar uh, Dr. Sham as as the guys elaborated he was very knowledgeable so the area like the, his area of expertise the, the oil field chemistry that's that's a huge area in the oil field industry and without a doubt he is the the best in the world in this area and putting that in mind his second quality was that he was so humble he was like he would always say that i'm still learning that uh, i i don't know anything i don't know i don't know everything i'm still learning even in this age i'm still learning so he would and that's one thing he appreci- appreciates the most that the the journey of learning and he would tell me like do not be afraid to make mistakes you have to make mistakes so that you do not repeat them and that's the only way you will learn and he was as i said he was so caring um about our lives outside work he would uh, like every time he would ask me how is your parents how are they doing in the madness of the, the the covid and stuff and and then he would jump to the to to work and you should do that or let me know what happens when you do that um try as as you go said he he knows like when he like when he suggests uh, a paper or like a publication or something that i should go and read he would paper like publications and scientific papers are numbered so he remembers the number which is like six seven numbers you tell me yeah it's spe 20831142 or one is it is either 342 or one so he he just misses one number and he tell me go and find it so yeah that's all but he is like in one way he's an exceptional person Thank you so much. Uh so Harish, uh this is maybe out of context question, but what did your parents think of him? Like, you know, a professor in a very reputable um uh, university calling them to make sure that they feel okay about their son. Um so okay, so in terms of uh this question, um my parents they they always used to push me in general. and uh through life throughout life every stage of my life i've been pushed um in all academic milestones but the moment i entered grad school um they had this notion that we have to leave him alone and learn by himself but they're also scared at the same time to do that so that's where dr nasaldin paved a really good medium in that particular angle because um you know he's a parent away from home essentially that's how you think about him and uh my whenever he used to call my dad my dad has come and met him in person multiple times um he's he's had selfies with him in the in, in his phone and things like that even without knowing him or having prior knowledge about him before so the moment he walked into his chambers and when he came out the impression about dr hisham itself was very different and uh because initially you don't know much about the person but you've heard volumes about the person in the industry but when you go and meet him in person it's uh, he's a true human being and that's what my dad said the first time he met him and um you know for the amount of recognition and fame that Dr. Nasruddin has um his ability to come down and talk strike a balance with anyone in life that is amazing and that's that's one of the things which my father noticed in him and um whenever he used to call my dad um he's called my dad like at, my dad used to text him because he was very concerned about you know um about the preliminary exam or the defense or how's the phd going for my son and things like that and he would actually answer respond to his text immediately and um he would call him and ask him not to worry in person he's like you know harish is doing really fine do not worry i am behind him and i am there for him and when an advisor says that to a parent i don't think a parent needs to hear anything else um and that that was the most comforting part for my dad and that took off half of his worry you know so that's something i'd like to share 
Thank you so much. So if he was listening to you right now, what do you want to say to him? I would like to start with Abdurrahman. If, if he's listening to me uh, right now, um, I'd like to thank him. I think um, there, there are no words that I can tell him uh, that would um, resemble the impact he's had on my life. Uh, not just academic, uh, not, not just personal. Um, it's overall, as a, as a researcher, as a, as a human being, as a father, as a son, as a husband, um, I, I learned a lot from him. And I, I would tell him that I will carry, carry this legacy uh, until the day I die. Uh, he, you've been dedicated until your last breath. Uh, he, when he was in the ICU um, a couple of weeks ago, he, he called not just me, he called Harish, uh, he called Raja, he called several of us to talk about work. And, and I feel uh, that is him in a nutshell. He is dedicated uh, until his dying breath. The, the, this is what, who he was. Thank you. Thank you. Ahmed? Yes. Um, if he's listening to me now, I would say um, I miss you so much in my life. Um, it was a much better place with you in it. I would like to say that he was um, he was a really caring person. Um, he was really so uh, selfless. He taught me not to be um, uh, self-focused. Instead, he sh he said that you um, should see how your actions affect uh, affect others. Uh, I was really close to him. That I really knew his doctor's schedule. He um, he did dialysis three times a week, like recently four times. He did physical therapy. He weekly he used to go to his eye doctor, dentist, the doctor for the uh, diabetes, the high blood pressure. Uh, he was he was really sick, but he knew that him working would uh, help a lot of other students to get a lot of students get a better chance of uh, of, uh, of education or studies. So he continued to supervise and guide until his last moment, and I'm I'm really uh, grateful for him for that. May he rest in peace. Thank you so much, Igor. Um, um, am I pronouncing your name in the right way? Is it Igor? Igor. It's, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's actually Igor, but I don't Igor. Mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. First of all, I will tell him that Dr. Nasadin, we figure out was we we figured out what's going on with rotating disc apparatus when you run the test at, at high RPM. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of a joke because uh, we started that project recently, and he was really interested what what's going on there. Uh, yeah, and we figure out. So, and I really want, I, I would like not only tell him something, I would like to shake his hand and hug him and then tell that uh, we really miss him. Uh, yeah, and we'll be remembering him all our life. And all these personal qualities he showed us and he showed us how we should behave and we'll try to behave as he taught us. Thank you. Thank you so much all. Uh, thank you for joining today. I had a blast talking to you all. I could tell how he affected your life, not just professionally, but personally. I can actually feel the pain in your voices. And uh, let me just say that I've met him probably four years ago when I was supposed to come to Texas A&M and he was a father to me, honestly. And his wife as well, Dr. Muna, was an incredible person, uh, such an amazing person. And we've lost a great person and a great doctor and a great professor. And he was absolutely dedicated and absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much all again for joining and for your time. And um, I wanted to ask you a question that what will be his legacy or what do you think is his legacy? And I think his legacy is you guys. 
Thank you so much again, so and Nihal, uh, have a good time. Nihal, yeah. Nihal, before you finish, yeah, um, that's why I suggest to you that we have let his students talk about him. You can see now how is the feeling. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm pretty sure he is proud of all of you. I have just a question for uh, Igor. Um, Igor, I know that you're a strong guy, but when Nasruddin passed away, uh, I saw you crying like you are a member of his family. All of us were so sad, but I noticed you from a way that you were crying like you are really part of his family. What makes you feel like that with Nasruddin? Uh, how many years you are working with Nasruddin? Like two years? Uh, around three and a half. I first met him five years ago. Uh, so, yeah, but I am not a, I'm not a young person. <laughs> I've been I working know, in I I've been working in the industry and uh, I know how interpersonal relationships may look like when you feel uh, uncomfortable, maybe unsafe and uh, other opposites and working with Dr. Nasidin it's completely different picture, completely different world. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I could like not to... imagine. I could not imagine that I will ever, ever be working with such person. I want to say something to support Igor in this because um, you know I don't think Igor is going to mind. But um, there was a company. Uh, I'm not going to mention the company's name, but. Um, they, Igor was initially handling a project for them and they were not happy with the results, etc. And um, so they actually asked Dr. Nasruddin and they asked him for another student, all right? And he came to, Dr. Nasruddin basically asked me to take over the project for some reason. Now, you know, and even what I want to say here is that he never ever will give up on you because the first statement that he made to me as well as the company in a conference call is that Igor is always specific and to the point and he never is wrong. This is what he said and I've not told this to Igor but uh, I think he will really love to hear this from what Dr. Nasruddin said and I think it's a very apt platform right now to mention this because um, he never gave up on, on anyone, anybody of us. Um, yeah, and that's true. I he will always so. support us. No matter, even if we really did make mistakes, um, and no matter what, he would actually stand up for us. And standing up for us is one of the major qualities of an advisor. And that he will do and he would do. And that is something which we're going to miss in him to a great extent. Yeah, in short words, he was a father. The one yeah. who raised the bar so high for you to succeed, and he would like he would push you so hard, and he would love to see you succeeding. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, my, okay, I uh, I want to add something really quick because yeah. I, I think if he if he hears me now, he will be happy to hear this. Uh, Dr. Shah, Manchester United have been winning for for four <laughs> games now. They have been on a winning yeah. streak. That's something he will like. <laughs> Uh, Nasruddin, uh, yeah, was a Liverpool, big fan. Liverpool lost right? four 0 to Manchester City, and he, he would love that because he didn't like Liverpool, and I was a fan of Liverpool, <laughs> and he liked Manchester United. Manchester United have been winning for for like a month now. That's something he would like. And Liverpool are not in a good shape. That's something we really, really love. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Omar. Yeah. Thank you, Omar. Thank you for ending this on a positive note. So, uh, thank you, guys, and we will be in touch, of course. Thank you Thank and you. have a good day. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.